You know, electric car sales in the US haven't really taken off, but they're actually much better value than people realize in many cases, particularly cars from General Motors and Ford. I don't think we recognize what's actually going on here because we're just going to, you know, thinking, oh, look at that price, of that car that's expensive, 63,000 US dollars. I mean, uh, I mean, EVs are expensive. That's what people are saying, but it's actually really not true. And I'm going to illustrate why that is. Very, very clear. I think by the end by the end of this video, at least within a couple of minutes of watching it, you're going to say, well, hang on a minute. Electric cars are unbelievably good value, even, well, even in the United States, even without the EV tax credit. Guys, I'm with PowerShop for my EV charging electricity plan. You can get a $100 credit on your electricity bill. Plus, if you sign up with my referral link in the description below, you'll get an additional, that's $175 of credit to sign up to PowerShop. I use the EV day saver plan. And the reason is because for those two hours from 12 till 2 p.m. in the day, you get electricity completely free. So yeah, two hours a day, it's probably gonna cover your electricity bills for your EV every day. Basically, you can charge your, free, your EV for free on this plan. I'll put a link in the description below. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Ford and General Motors, they have responded to the end of EV tax credits with some discounting, but not really so much discounting, but more new models, right? The new Ford F-150 Lightning, stick with me here. And if you don't want an F-150 Lightning, I get that, but stick with me. It starts at a price of $63,000. For $63,000, you get a big pickup truck. So that's less than 100,000 Australian dollars, or you know what's that about 58,000 euros. 58,000 euros, you get a very big truck but you get a 123 kilowatt hour battery. Coincidentally, that's the same size battery as what's in a Tesla Cybertruck. I have seen a Ford F-150 used for vehicle to grid. So you can power your house with your Ford F-150 if you want to in the US, or if you buy one in Australia, you can only buy them converted from left-hand drive to right-hand drive in Australia. They're expensive here though, but in the US, $63,000 and you're getting a 123 kilowatt hour battery to power your house and a car to use as well. And it's got a massive front and it's actually a pretty, a pretty damn good vehicle. Is it perfect? No, but for that price, does it need to be? Should it be? I mean, let's be honest guys, 123 kilowatt hour battery. That's basically like say what, nine Tesla power walls plus a car. I mean, Nine Tesla Powerwalls costs more than a Ford F-150. So a Ford F-150 is giving you the equivalent of nine Tesla Powerwalls. You can power your house, like I said, and a, and a car. I mean, it's ridiculous. When you think about it that way, it's incredibly good value. And this is not just Ford, right? Other companies are doing this. General Motors as well. General Motors, the Silverado, the standard range battery, right? It's a similar price. It's 120 kilowatt hour battery. It also can be used for vehicle to grid. The extended range battery is 170 kilowatt hours. But if you get the max range version, which can do about 500 miles of range, when people have actually tested it in the real world, it's getting close to 500 miles of range. It's a 204 kilowatt hour battery. Now, incredibly, that vehicle with five, about 500 miles of real world range, right? It actually broke the world record of range for an EV. And this is a pickup truck. It drove 1,705 kilometers. It was driving an average speed of 20 to 25 miles an hour. So 32 to 40 kilometers an hour, which is called hypermiling. Not real world realistic, unless you're going that kind of slow all the time, which you're probably not going to be but 1,705 kilometers, so about 1,100 miles, nearly 1,100 miles. Anyhow, you get my point. My point is this, that when you're buying some of these vehicles in the US, you're getting the ability to actually use the vehicle for vehicle to grid. In Australia, you can use pretty most vehicles, not all of them, but most EVs for vehicle to grid as well. If you get the right hardware and you get the right connections and everything else, you don't really need to spend all that money though in the, that you need to in Australia to get your connection for, to the grid because the way these vehicles are set up, they're already basically ready to connect directly to your house. You will need to get an electrician to set it up, but it's not gonna cost you all that much money. 
Now, the crazy thing is as well, I mean, if you like off-roading, there's the Chevy Silverado Trail Boss, which is basically set up for off-roading. And GM says that the Trail Boss is $72,000, US dollars, has 478 miles of range, so it's got that massive battery. So you're getting a 204 kilowatt hour battery for $72,000, right? I mean, that is ridiculous. How, could, how long could you power your house with a 200 and four kilowatt hour battery. Now, well, if you've got solar, no, forever, you, would, you could go off the grid. So this is an idea for you, guys. I've looked at property in the past, which has been quite cheap because it wasn't connected to electricity. You know, you go and find blocks of land in different places and you think, oh, you know, what about if I, I set up a house there, right? You can now get prefabricated houses and, you know, they'll get a crane and they'll just drop it to, on, your, on your property. And I've actually done this before in the past. Uh, in fact, I bought a house that was nearly new, cut it in half with a chainsaw and then moved it with a truck to a new location, joined it back together and I had a house ready to go, yeah? Now, I didn't have the option of just buying a vehicle to use to power my house or buying batteries, which you could do as well. But this isn't a, a real option. 204 kilowatt hour battery. You could, I mean, literally be completely off grid with a battery that big as long as you had enough solar. Now, guys, I've just checked the prices and I stand corrected. This is 72,000 is for the 410 mile range version. If you want to get the max battery pack, it's 88,000. And that gives you the 478 miles of range. But you can also tow 12,500 pounds. Yeah. And you can put 2,100 pounds of payload in the, in the tray. Plus, you get 725 horsepower. That's 540 kilowatt and 1,050 newton meters of torque. I mean, it's got a mid gate, it's got plenty of space to carry stuff. This would just be such a great vehicle. If you look at the price though, of the cheapest version of Chevy's Silverado with the bigger battery pack, right? It's 76,493 miles of range, 493 miles of range. And that does come with a 204 kilowatt hour battery. And if you don't want a 204 kilowatt hour battery, just get the 171. That costs 68,000. So, Basically, guys, you're paying for the price of a battery in the US right now, and you're getting a truck with it. I mean, it's something that's worth considering. And it's something that I think a lot of truck buyers in the US are not weighing up. They're not actually thinking to themselves, I could get rid of my electricity bills here. You know, even if you're connected to the grid, you could use this. Yeah, you could charge this with solar on what basically on weekends. I'm sure you're not going to be at work all the time. But this would be a way for you to, to drive to work for free, um, you know, to do a lot of your driving for very low cost. There's a lot of electricity plans, right, where you can charge during the nighttime in the US for a couple of cents per kilowatt hour. This would save you enormous amounts of money. And the truth is the price of some of these electric cars, not just the ones that I've mentioned, but the price of them is actually often very similar to the internal combustion versions, not much different. In fact, often it's only a couple of thousand dollars more. So I think I've made the point, but some of you might not agree with me. And if you don't, let me know in the comments. But if you do, let me know as well. Guys, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.